The following content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. It does not constitute means for diagnosis, healthcare advice, nor treatment. Make use of a qualified healthcare professional for such purposes. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Charlene Ortiz, and today we are going to carry our first lecture when it comes to the history of psychology. Let's talk a little bit about where the psychology come from. Psychology as a field is actually relatively new, right? If you compare it to other fields and other forms of science, psychology is actually a new science. It's not as old as many people believe. It does have some roots in more classical times, However, psychology as a field, as a science, is actually relatively new as a science. Now, so we have different fields in psychology that provided the foundation of what it is that we know today. First, let's talk a little bit about structuralism. This was a of study. It was a field of study that proposed that we need to understand the structure, structure of what the mind is. In order for me to understand behavior, I need to understand what are the components that are fundamental, the basic elements that are fundamental to the conscious experience. Notice that some of the things that we're interested in was sensation, perception. Probably heard many people say, well, there's the truth, your truth, my truth, and what actually happened. In order for us to gain an understanding of our surroundings and our behavior, which we inform based on our surroundings, we need to understand the structure of how it is that we sense things through our senses, how we perceive things. And you're thinking, what does that have to do with psychology? Well, as you know, I practice under supervision. And it is really important for me to understand how an individual perceives their surroundings, because for you and I, this is a classroom, right? A classroom, you've got your clinical instructor, you have your peers next to you. But for another person, this is perceived as a threat because they have social anxiety. So this could be perceived as a hallucination, right? Maybe I'm not good old Dr. Shar, maybe I'm a demon, right? Because this person is having a psychotic break. So it is important for us to understand the structure, right? Of how individuals, the elements that go into the conscious experience. Notice that they were interested in aspects of vision, Hearing, touch, basically matters of sensation. Let's talk a little bit about introspection. This method was immensely important for structuralists because what you're going to do here in introspection is that you're going to have a very careful and systematic observation of your own conscious experience. Why is that significant? Say, for example, that I gauge as a 10 for pain Maybe a seven to you, but I gauge as not stressful. So for example, I don't, I don't have any issues with anxiety. So this to me is great. I love teaching, love being in front of an audience. Whereas for some of you, you would gauge this as a 10. This would be immensely anxiety producing to be in front of a hundred something people. You'll notice that we will have to do introspection. That's going to allow you to have a self-observation of this conscious experience that you're having right now here live in the classroom. The key is in the name, right? It is addressing the function, the purpose of your consciousness rather than the structure of your consciousness. The argument was by the individuals who were in the functionalism side of things and that school of thought, they would say, well, it's great, fine and dandy that you can tell me what the structure is, but what does it do? What is the function? So for those of you who are in engineering, you could see, I understand that this is an engine, but what does this do exactly? So structuralism would be explaining all the different parts of that engine, but in functionalism, you would be interested in saying, all right, this is what this gauge does, this is what this part does. 
So that's what we're looking into, right? The function of those elements, because they thought that knowing about the structure is simply not enough in order to understand the conscious experience. Notice that this school of thought was immensely influenced by William James. Now, he had a significant contribution, which was he included the theory of emotion that is still influential to this day. He also developed the principles of psychology, which became a standard for many generations many generations in order for us to understand the functions of our consciousness. Notice that perhaps his most significant contribution was that he started noticing that we can analyze consciousness through elements, right? That consciousness was not simply a conglomerate of that experience, but rather different elements that go into play in order for you to inform your consciousness. He would argue is that you have a flow of thoughts. And in analyzing that flow, you would have then your elements, basically looking at static points of that consciousness. Because as you know, consciousness is flowing, right? What you're doing right now, listening to me, feeling the temperature of the room, how hard or soft your chair is. So it is flowing. But he proposed, let's look at a specific element, which would be a time frame, right? A time frame of that specific level of consciousness. 